Hello crypto friends, currently sunrise here in Iceland, sitting in my car to not wake up other people to get this video out. But checking in on Bitcoin, Bitcoin Shorts, Ethereum, ETH, USD, Dash, BNB, and EOS. So the daily time frame, this bounce is pretty nice for Bitcoin. It's getting some solid follow through. We're getting a nice uptrend on the four hour time frame. Higher lows and higher highs on the hourly in the four hour. And at this point, this is saving the equilibrium on the weekly time frame. So we now have a higher low in place. And I am calling it that because it was a potential bear flag. But with the green candlestick that we saw yesterday, that's enough follow through for me to negate the potential bear flag. And now the battle is with the daily exponential moving averages. So the weekly time frame, we can see we're still in a very tight range. We still have that end of September, early October uh, time frame that we're looking for this break. And the bulls want to make their way to 6750. 6750 puts us right in the middle of the range between 7,400, our last weekly lower high, and our new higher low, 6,116. If we see a bear break, then we obviously look down to 5,900, 5,777. If we get up and break 7,400, it will be very notable. I believe everybody on Twitter and on social media is going to be sounding the bullhorn, and we're going to see a lot of follow through, in my opinion. As far as the bear break goes, because of the amount of speed that we saw that dump on Bitcoin over the last or over those four day period here, we knew that even if we broke support, we wouldn't be seeing a lot of downward action because we were so extended already. So the tighter this equilibrium gets, the more follow through that we're going to get in the direction that we do get the break. So again, we still have the ETF decision towards the end of the month. That's something to be keeping an eye on. A lot of people are still anticipating a bear break, and that's just fine because we still have a downtrend on the weekly time frame as far as lower highs go. We have a couple higher lows now on the weekly time frame, but it's really anybody's game. I'm still favoring the bears due to the prolonged overall trend. A lot of people are looking for capitulation to be the signal that the bottom is in, and capitulation is going to be you know, one of those all-out dumps, extreme fear scenarios before that bounce gets going. But I don't feel that's necessary. I feel that however this weekly equilibrium breaks is going to be significant enough to shift the trend for weeks at a bare minimum and probably for months, probably into the rest of the year at least. So we did get a little bit of bullish news in terms, I forget which bank it was off the top of my head. I think it was Morgan Stanley offering some swaps trading on Bitcoin. That's nice news for me personally. It doesn't really do a whole lot to move the needle. It does offer exposure to other traders and you know the stock market world but it doesn't have any direct implications on the underlying of Bitcoin itself. It's going to track the price of Bitcoin, but it's not going to be buying or selling any Bitcoin itself. So not really going to have a significant impact on the actual asset. So checking in on the four hour uptrend, if we lose the four hour higher lows on Bitcoin, that's when we're going to say our daily lower high has been set. And again, the bulls want to make their way to 70, 67, 50 or higher the higher the better. And that was the same game plan we had on the weekly time frame. We chose 7,200 because that was the middle of the previous weekly range between 84 and 59. And then we pulled, we got a little bit of extra follow through over that $200 and then pulled back. So let's see if the bulls can get that follow through up to the middle of that range. The new four hour higher low that we're watching after a four hour little bull flag, it held exponential supports and saw continuation. That level is now 6,410. Anything above that will keep the bulls in control. And they're trying for another higher low right now at 6,505. And we'll see if that does follow through to a new high. Current resistance is 65.80. So break 65.80 and we'll consider 6,505 our new higher low. So in, in as far as I'm concerned, the four hour time frame and the daily time frame in combination and the weekly give the most clarity. I, I've been shifting to that longer term perspective on those time frames rather than looking at the 15 minute or the hourly. If you are trading short term, you absolutely want to still be using those short term time frames. I personally am not currently, so I'm focused on the broader picture and the longer term time frames because of that. Shorts on Bitcoin still absolutely high. 37,000, not seeing a whole lot of profit taking. And essentially, if we break this weekly equilibrium bullish, there's going to be a lot of shorts that have to cover. Just like if we break the equilibrium bearish, there's going to be a lot of stops that trigger and a lot of longs that exit their position as they anticipate heading down to the low $5,000 range. So again, it's anybody's game. The bears still have the slight advantage. If you see the bulls make their move up to, you know, 69 uh, 6,900, 7,000, that's going to shift the odds uh, towards their favor a decent little bit there. So that is what I'm watching for my estimation on what is most likely to happen. And again, right now it still does favor the bears, but a decent little bounce for the bulls. Ethereum had a beautiful bounce, went over in the yesterday's video or two days ago, 
the signal that we have on the alert system for that oversold climax on the daily time frame. It's only fired four times since we've had it. And every single time, pretty much worst case scenario was sideways trading. Everybody else, the other three times, led to a solid bounce. So again, that went off in the 180s and gave a nice, almost a 20% follow through move, just about 20%. And now we're topping out on the daily, rejecting from exponential resistance. Bitcoin is at and testing re exponential resistance as well. Looks like I'm on Bitstamp here for ETH. And again, I always check all these different exchanges to see what the volume's like. But if I am trading, it is going to be up to what is Coinbase doing because that is where I am trading. So we have a temporary top right now on Ethereum. And on the four hour time frame, we're watching the higher lows. The bulls are trying to form 209.11 as a higher low. And if we lose that level, our daily lower high will be set. So just like Bitcoin, lose the four hour uptrend. And our daily lower high will be set and we'll look for some healthy consolidation. Well, I wouldn't even call it healthy consolidation because at this point, the daily chart is still very clearly in a downtrend. And I would be looking at resistance of 233, 234 to try and start to change that. But in order to convincingly change that trend, bulls have to get over 300 from here. And that's not happening anytime soon. So we would need a, a daily lower high, a pullback, a higher low, and then a break of the daily lower highs to actually do something. One thing that stood out to me looking at these charts last night is the volume climaxes on the hourly time frame giving indication of the consolidation that is coming. So watch for those ETH volume spikes and the ones that we've seen, we've seen at a bare minimum two hours of healthy consolidation. So that's a decent little signal for a short term. Again, volume spikes are leading to consolidation on the hourly time frame for Ethereum. Congrats to the bulls that got into these trades. There's multiple different ways to be playing these bounces for bulls. Number one, you're just locking in short-term profit, knowing that we could break in either direction and not wanting to get back that profit. Number two, you're setting stop losses at break even. And depending on where you enter, that does leave the possibility that you could get stopped out before a bull break of these weekly equilibrium ha patterns happen, if they were to happen. Man, you guys got to see these mountains and clouds. We're taking a little break here. Ruining my setup. Pit stop. We'll be right back. I don't know if this computer is going to do it justice, but there is a wave of clouds. Sorry for the noise. All right. I need to finish this up and go look at that. So, sorry about that. Let's try that again. Distracted. Where was I? So ETH, oh, the, the two, the game plans. So your stop loss at break even, that gives you the potential to get stopped out without a break of the equilibrium pattern or your stop loss is below the low that we've recently hit on the daily timeframes in that consolidation. So that's where your game plans stand, those three scenarios pretty much, and every single one has a different risk to reward. The least risk and least reward is locking in your profit in the short term. The highest risk and highest reward is setting your stop loss below the low of consolidation if you're a bull, and then giving yourself the potential for a swing trade bull break, which would give a lot of reward potential. Again, it all depends on your style and what you wanna do, but Ethereum is watching the four hour uptrend just like Bitcoin at this point. ETH BTC, the bounce is the same as ETH USD, which is why we saw more follow through on Ethereum because the bounce in the pairing was happening at the same time. So when you have the USD vol uh, value going up and you have the ETH BTC value going up, that's when we see the bigger gains in ETH compared to BTC. Dash on the daily time frames, a really nice equilibrium to be watching. We have the high, the low, lower high, higher low, lower high. Current range is support of 170.44 and resistance is 201. And we're heading back to the middle of that range. So that's a nice daily equilibrium to be watching. Some other altcoins I'm watching, BNB and EOS still have weekly support levels. And anybody that has not broken to lower lows like Ethereum and Litecoin and BCHL did, those names have a bit of an advantage because they're closer to changing their weekly trend than names that drop down to fresh lows. So if Binance can hold the support of 825 and see a bull break of 1188, that changes the weekly trend in their favor and breaks the lower highs after a little higher low forms. So keep an eye on the altcoins 
that still have weekly support levels and are one step ahead of changing the trend in their favor. And again, just looking at the longer term weekly timeframes. And for EOS, we have some supports here as well. I'm looking at support of 4, 418 and a higher low the bulls are trying to form at 461. So hold 460 or four, hold 418 and then see a bull break of 683. And that changes the weekly trend. That gives us a little higher low and then breaks the lower highs. And again, ETH on its weekly time frame is nowhere near changing the trend. On any bounce that we see, it's going to just set a lower high in a in the most likely scenario. So always comparing those altcoins if you're trading them. What do they look like compared to Bitcoin? Do they have weekly supports? How much closer are they ch to changing their trend than other altcoins? And you can separate who's more bullish and who's bearish that way. I appreciate you all watching. I hope you continue to do good things. Had some vegetarians, the crypto vegetarians came out after the last video, and that's fine. Respectfully uh, sharing opinions that differ is great, and it actually led to me to contemplate and, and get introspective on the drive across the Icelandic plains yesterday, listening to some Jethro Tull. And it's fine to have differing opinions. My opinion is that none of these sheep and these animals would exist if they had not been bred into existence for their meat. I personally, if you gave me the choice, I would absolutely take a few years of ideal living conditions knowing that a swift end would be coming rather than not being in existence at all. So if you say, all right, Iceland's going to be progressive and, and stop eating meat, you're going to have literally 500,000 sheep that never experience life because they're never going to be bred. So again, you give me one day of experiencing life and tell me that I'm going to be killed at the end of it, or I cannot exist, I'll take that one day every time. I don't fear death. I don't fear pain. And I think that that's a, a big difference that this opinion derives from, is that people maybe have a little bit different viewpoint of what death actually is. And again, that's fine as well. So you can't have, in, in life, there's there's extremes, right? There's There's no right and wrong answer on some issues, which is why there are so many different opinions on issues. And there's many issues where there is no wrong opinion. And in my opinion, you cannot have, there, life's all about extremes, yin and yang, equilibriums, higher lows, lower highs, things like that. And you know, that big bowl of soup wouldn't taste as good and wouldn't be as enjoyable if you did not experience hunger before it. And that fresh drink of mountain stream water would not be as refreshing if you didn't experience thirst. Love would not be as great if you didn't experience loneliness. Uh, pleasure without pain is not the same thing. So the fact that life is so incredible and so astounding to us and can be so enjoyable in such an experience, it's because it's going to end. And we know that if life was never going to end, things would be really dull and, and we wouldn't get the same out of it. So for me, that's my opinion. I don't, I'm just ranting now, looking at the clouds and mountains. I'm going to sign off and I'll have some videos for you all after I get back and edit them. Continue to do good things out there and we will see you soon. And this weekly equilibrium is going to be a fun one to watch sometime soon.